train, so we'll put something out for that. Um, the reason for this interview really is to like, get to know you, um, so people can start kind of following your career and what have you. Um, so what would be really good is to tell us how originally you got into boxing, anything that influenced you and, and what age you were. Um, well, I always wanted to be, become a boxer, but um, never really had the means or the time to um, get into it. Where um, when I started noticing my friend, my, one of my close friends, when we, was, when we was younger, before the whole boxing thing, um, when, I, when we grew up in Wolf Road, uh, Richard Riappo, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he got into boxing, and then I asked him, bring me, bring me along. I think it was like, I think it was like. 19 at the time, and I said, yeah, bring me along, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll bring you, I'll bring you, and, he, and, he, and I don't think we ever, he ever got around to bringing me, so then I just walked in the gym one day, um, Clint, uh, Clinton and McKenzie's gym, and um, just started training from there, and then eventually I linked up with Richard again, and then we both started attending the, uh, the Lynn ABC in Warfield, Peckham Warfield. Yeah, we've um, yeah we've interviewed with Richard, really nice guy, and obviously he's had a um, an interesting career into into boxing, obviously his yeah. background and what have you. Um, you know, with, with your background, did you have like a similar story, like you know, going to trouble, and what have you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and first it was like a release to kind of release of that energy, so to speak. Um. Yeah, at, at first it was just something to do to keep my mind out of trouble um, because originally before boxing I, I did go to, to jail and I spent a little time and then I came out and then uh, I made up my mind what I wanted to do myself so while I was um, preparing to um, sort my life out I was just um, I got, in, got into boxing to uh, just keep my mind out of trouble keep me busy and keep my mind clear so. um, just Going back a little bit, are you able to say what you got in uh, trouble for? Or? Yeah, um, it was drugs. And you spent a little bit of time inside. Yeah. Whilst you were inside, was it, did it kind of hit home a little bit that, like, shit, I you know, kind of need to kind of get out, do something, and um, change my life? Or, you know, was it one of those things where you just kind of come out and still have the same mentality? Kind of thing? No, because I had um, a child. I was young, I think she was about one going into two. So, getting into drugs, I knew the risk. So, I wasn't, I wasn't stupid mentally. I always wanted to make a, a difference in my life. While I was selling drugs, um, I've always stuck to my studies. So, while I was selling drugs, I was in, um, I finished, completed um, college, and then I came out and then um, I managed to get a place into university. So I wasn't a stupid drug dealer. I always, I was selling drugs, but I always knew that this wasn't forever. So you had a plan in place, like yeah. ideally what you wanted to do, and just kind yeah. of make yeah. some money, and make a bit yeah. of money on the side. Just, it was just, a, just to get by. Just to get, it was all I knew, really, because growing up where we grew up, it was just, just surrounded by it. So. It was what you saw, what this person had, what that person had, and you just, just, just to ease the pain and the, the, um, the struggle of your mum, of your parents as well. Like, I've never taken money from my mum since I was 14 years old, so that sort of gave me that relief and um, comfort to, to live off myself, um, not caring of the risk, but I needed to live properly when my child came, so. That's where that's where everything developed. How did you um, so you get caught? Is a word. I suppose that's what that word. <laughs> it's a funny story. Um, I wasn't really the, the the proper story. Was I wasn't really meant to be um, out of my house. I was. I had um, like somebody that was uh, doing it for me, and um, I was in bed and he wasn't answering his phone. So I was kind of raging to myself. And my missus was like, just go back to bed, just turn off the phone. And I, I, I didn't have comfort in my mind, so I called a cab. And then uh, I went to the area where I was um, doing it. And um, I picked up packets and started doing it myself. 
And then while the, the phones, while the phone got a bit quiet, um, I, was, I just found a spot in the cafe and just sitting down eating in the cafe. And then I saw my mate, my, my mate's worker, the person I was working for, my mate, and then he just sat with me and we was eating together. And um, we finished eating. And uh, before we, I left, it's so funny, but because before I left, my mate's worker said, do you want me to hold it for you? And I said, no, nah, don't worry about it. And then as soon as we stepped out of the cafe, CIDs drove and was watching. It's tinted car, tinted CID car. And that's not really common. I could see in a tinted CID car. But we knew straight away. As soon as that door opened, kicked. I was gone. I jumped over about two cars, over traffic. And then I tried to throw the, the because I had a pack of 30s, one white, one B, one here and one crap. Pack of 30s, and I tried to throw it over the wall. One went over, one rebound, hit the wall, rebound, and dropped back down. So I looked back, I was like, oh, shoot. I ran back picked it up and swallowed it. But while I was swallowing it, the, the, the police officers were struck fighting me. So I was into the struggle with the police officers. They knew it was in my mouth. And then swallowed it, got nicked. And then they got it out of me. That was it. Just it. Um, so after you, um, after you kind of got, got caught, and obviously going inside, T tell us kind of a little bit like what was it like inside and how did you cope? And It was shocking because I've been doing it, I had a long run really, I had a couple of years where I was doing everything, doing everything right and everything was going on my side for a couple of years. So when I had that first day in prison, I was sitting on my bed and I was like, what am I doing here? I think that goes through everyone's mind when they first go to jail. You sit on your bed and you're just like, what am I doing here? Like, what on earth am I doing here? What could I sell? Um, yeah, yeah, because I was in Feltham, so they... The first two weeks, don't you, don't you get like a you set in period or something? First, like yeah, for me it was my first week. I was in Feltham, so I was in Feltham for a week. Uh, it was like 24 hour, no, 23 hour banger. And uh, you have half, uh, half an hour soul sh I think an hour or so she got time to eat and shower. So you put you banged up for 23 hours and I didn't, I, did I have a TV? Yeah, I did have a TV, that's all I had. I think TV switches on at like nine o'clock or something. Yeah, so. So no free views at 12 o'clock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Channel one to five. <laughs> so it was a bit, yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit, the first night was a bit mad. And then. That kind of hit home a little bit like. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was always like a quiet person, so I just kept myself to myself. If I knew someone, I, I, I say I held them up, and that was about it. Just kept myself to myself. But I remember my last night. I was seeing her. I saw a mate, and like when I saw him, I was I was trying to get his attention, but his face just looked weird. Like he's, I've never seen his face like that. He looked scared, and that night. He, he, he said my name. He must, I think he said his name to, my name to someone, and we end up banging up together, being in the same cell. And a, a week before that, before we was in jail, I was we was on the phone together, and I said, "Ah, oh, why don't you stop? Why don't you stop all this?" Because I was on bail, so so I was trying. I was talking to him, trying to be positive to him. And said, stop all this, man. Because I'm looking. I could. I could do time. But you might as well stop all this. It's just nonsense, man. And then next minute, I see him in jail. And then he's telling me he's in jail for, for murder. He didn't even tell me, but I knew. We were banged up together, just me and him. And he wouldn't tell me that. But he was telling me the story, but he wouldn't let the words come out of his mouth what he's in jail for. So, yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit, it was a big lesson for me. It was a big, big lesson, big lesson. I won't be going back there, no way. It's good to, uh, obviously, obviously hear that, that you know. So learn the lesson is probably the best word. But inside, was it um, when you had, when you were in there for the first time? What what was it like? Was it like um, you know certain, certain prisons don't have like that kind of corners like the gang orientated. Yeah. Some prisons are just a bit uh, more everything goes. And... As I said, people had their friends, but I just kept myself to myself. I just got my food, uh, went back to myself, had my shower, just went back. Just wanted to get, uh, to get 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 it over and done with, really. How long were you in for? Just under a year. So.
What, what was it like? Um... And I was like that for the year. <laughs> <laughs> I was like that for the year. Just wanted to just get, because I knew it was, I was planning, I planned every my life, planned my life. And I didn't want those distractions really. Yeah, I would speak to a few people, but originally I kept myself to myself. What age did you, when, when you came out, what age were you? Uh, I think I was 20. Okay, and then just when you picked up your yeah. studies and... Yeah, I was boxing before, when I was on Bell, so I was boxing for a couple of months. Cause I, was, I think I was on Bell for about a year. And then, yeah, for a couple of months I was boxing, came back out, continued it, and then um, got back into, got into university, uh, got my degree, went back, got a master's, and um, just like continued. One of the smartest yeah. extra state, the I'm not even smart, I'm dyslexic, but uh, it's anyone, what I had. Anyone that gets a degree is... It, what did you study? I studied, first I studied um, structural interior design, and then I just um, studied quantity surveying. But believe me, it was more hard work than smartness. I'd, I'm not even I'm not even intelligent. I'm not an intelligent person at all. I just it was my work ethic that got me there, definitely. What did you want to do? Obviously boxing didn't really take off in the way maybe you you know you hoped. Yeah. What what was your second kind of career path that you I always did? wanted to be an architect really. And um I tried to get into architecture but they didn't the university didn't accept me. And I'd, well, I made a mistake because I didn't keep trying. I just went for the second best thing, um, quantities of aim, whereas it's architects, money. yeah, it's, it's good money. But I don't really enjoy it. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get into um, project management, where it's sort of the, not the same thing, but mm -hmm. I covered the project management modules in in my um, master. So I think I could definitely go through that rather than go through that route. What about amateur career? Um, boxing amateur career. Let's talk about that. Did you? You had an extensive amateur career? Yeah, I had about 23 fights. How was that? It was good. I won about 18, 17, 18 of them. So, not bad. Amateurs, I think I deserve, I deserve to lose about three. Amateurs is difficult. My first three fights I've lost, but I didn't deserve to lose it. So, but I just kept going, just kept going, kept going. Can you remember your first amateur fight? Was it yeah, against? yeah, I can remember that. <laughs> I can't remember who it was against, but I was a super heavyweight because I just come out of jail, so I was <laughs> like that. I weighed 16 stone when I came out of jail. And I'm, what am I now? I'm 13 something now. So, yeah, I weighed about 16. So, that was a bit, you could imagine it wasn't, it wasn't much experience, so it was a bit, bit wild, but I think it was, it was a good wild, you know what I mean? So, it was all right. Good experience. When um, obviously after you had your uh, amateur fights, what um, what kind of made you turn pro? Was it something um, specific, or was it you know financial? Uh, what uh, I think what I wanted to do was originally I wanted to turn pro. Then I just changed my mind, and then because I had a family, I had another child coming too, so I got two kids now. So then I, I put everything in, into perspective and um, I said, boxing, family, and I chose family. So I just got a job, started uh, concentrating on that, supporting my family. And then one day, I, but I kept, I kept training, maybe not boxing, but I kept going to the gym. I was continuing my running. And one day I was running and uh, I was just um, finishing my run. And then I was on, and then I was walking through a tunnel, and my old trainer Sam Mullins, he's the, he's the owner of this gym, um, Churchill, was boxing, and uh, he parked up right next to me. He was he he, he saw me finish running, and uh, he, he just was driving next to me while I was walking. He said, "Why don't you come back? I've got a gym over there, just around the corner." I said, "Is it? I didn't know that." And then. Then I was thinking about it, because while I was running, I was thinking, well, should I go back? Should I not? Should I go back? And then eventually I just came back. So that was it, really. It was Sam Marley's that plotted the seed and made me come back. Got the bio here. Yeah, 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 just made me come back. Um, for how long was it before, when you came back training again, before you made your professional debut? About, about a year and a bit. About a year and a bit. So I had to um, 
polish things up a bit. So yeah, yeah, Pref- yeah, all that as well. Which takes time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it um, when you actually made the professional debut, or just just before that? How, how was the, How were you feeling? You know, at the lead up to the fight. Was it exciting? Was it nervousness? Uh, not much nerves because I've I've done it before. It was more, yeah, excitement because I was training hard. So it was more excitement. There was not really nerves, a little bit of nerves, but not not um, nerves that made me a side too crazy. So it was all right. It was all right. And when um, when you when you uh, did the first spring walk, what was what was that like? Oh, it was amazing. Uh, I remember it today. What was the music? What was the song? Kiss from. That was my next question. What was it? Yeah, from uh, Prince. I like Prince, so I was I walked out to that. It was a good, good atmosphere. It was all cool, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like a, is it small but intimidating. Yeah, kind of place. yeah. yeah. When you've got your friends and family there. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, and just um, obviously, with, with with the first fight, I mean, could could you hear, hear all your friends and family? Yeah, actually? yeah, yeah. You could always, yeah, you could always hear that. I it was a proud moment as well to see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Professional debut. Yeah, yeah. I remember being at a couple of my my mates, and I said, oh, this is definitely what I want to do." So. At that time, of doing my room walk, I was doing it, so I, I was happy just just being there, just mm-hmm. getting there. It was a accomplishment for me. Okay. Was it four, four, yeah, fights, four fights? So yeah. slowly, kind of um, building up mm. the record and stuff. Um, I mean, is it cruiserweight the weight that you're looking to kind of stay out, or do you think you maybe move up in the future? Just, just step by step, step by step. See how cruiserweight holds. There's no point speaking about the future if you haven't accomplished the mm. present. Do you have a goal for 2019? Um, it's just keep doing what I'm doing. I, I think I'm 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 happy with what I'm doing. I just don't want to. I don't want to rush. I think um, last year I had less consideration for myself. I wasn't rushing, but I wasn't thinking. I made some some terrible decisions and uh, I won't be making that mistake this year. It's just trying to kind of get your head down. Yeah, Obviously you, you, no, 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 no rush, no rush. Get the experience and, yeah. and, then, and then see what happens. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I suppose in an ideal world, three, four, five, four, six rounds this year and then mm-hmm. get the experience, maybe a different type of opponent. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I don't think I've I don't think I've discovered myself yet as a boxer. I think there's still, still, still yet to discover myself. So See, that's you, exciting. But, but you mates with Richard. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Obviously, he's doing extremely well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you get to go and spar with him? Richard, yeah, we spar, but not, not really. We're, we're, we're family. Rather you take than a, I mean, you friends. obviously take a lot of like, advice from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, me and me and Richard were family. He was my he was my best man at my wedding. So oh. it's deeper than boxing, Richard. Yeah, his story is um, unbelievable. Yeah, obviously, yeah. obviously very yeah. very similar. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I was even there that day. If he's if he's told you about it, yeah, this incident, yeah. yeah. I, f- I believe I was there. If I wasn't, I was around. Yeah. And but I, I I can remember it like today, man. I f- everyone thought he was gonna die, man. It's, yeah. it's crazy. I know it's um to see. From what he said and what he's now accomplished, you know, yeah. WB International, Intercontinental Belt, and, yeah. and good example, managed by Dillian and what have you. It's um, it just kind of shows, doesn't it, that you, you know, if you have a bad run in life, that you can turn your life around, mm. like guys with yourself. And stuff, so. um, but outside of boxing, what, um, what 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 do you do to relax? Aside, you know, you have got your family stuff. Yeah. You try the sports. So they get some. Are you into other sports? Um, no, 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 no time really. Just, um, I just support my family. I suppose family time takes yeah, up a lot of that's time. It. That's it. That's it. I see them less as it is already. So work, training, I rarely see them. So I just spend time with my family. Do you get to um, watch much boxing or go to shows? Yeah, I go to I go to shows. I go to a lot of the big shows, and uh, I watch it sometimes, but. Try not make to make my life all about boxing because mm-hmm. I've got a family. So, so you can get boxing. Boxing. I keep mostly keep boxing in the gym. I don't really bring it home or oh, babes have to go out because I have to go watch this. Or, nah, I just 
I, w- I do that sometimes, but I try not to do it too much. Mm. I prioritise pri- prioritize my time with my family. Is, is there any, any boxer that you look up to or, or watch or think, you know, I'd like to maybe accomplish what he's done, like in, a, in, in your division? Do you like the Super Series? You know, you've got a lot of the, uh, the cruiserweights there, which mm. it's been a lot of pretty hard. Decent series, isn't it? To be honest, I look up to every boxer that's made a name for themselves because everyone's got a story. Everybody, not everybody, no boxer has made it smoothly. Everybody has something to say, and everybody has climbed mountains to get to where they went to. So, so I, I look up to every boxer, and win or lose, I respect them. Because I've got my story, they've got their story, and we could relate. Maybe in different ways, but we could always relate. If you um, if you had the choice to fight at one one stadium, one one venue, where would it be? To be honest, <laughs> to be honest, I, I'm not really somebody. I'm not really. I don't want to say to to, um, to make it sound bad, but I I don't want to. Um, I'm not like a child that looks that dreams to for this or for that. Because in life, I'm happy regardless. So if I make it, thank God. But if I don't, I'm happy. I'm fighting in York Hall right now, and um, which is I like iconic, but yeah. Nice, isn't it? It's iconic. I, I, I just enjoy doing what I'm doing wherever it is. Yeah, fighting in O2 would be amazing, but I don't believe, I don't think it'll be any different than fighting in New York Hall. Fight is fight. You, you, all, you got, all you're doing is looking at the opposite person that's standing in front of you. So you're not going looking around at the arena. You're looking at who's standing in front of you. Whoever the people that are watching you, that's going to make a big difference because your crowd is going to be different but the crowd is going to be bigger but I try not to make that pressure um, on my back too much so I, it will be amazing to fight in all 2 it will be amazing to fight in all the big arenas, stadiums but regardless and I'm happy that's what I, that's, that's, the, that's, my mo- that's my motto of life just to be happy where you are today that's it well Given us a bit of your time today, which is really appreciated. Uh, before we go, we always like you to shout out, like if you shout outs, sponsors, and your social media. Um, yeah, so if you, you know, any, any message for your fans and friends and family. Yeah, I want to um, thank all, all, all my supporters, my, my day one supporters. Um, I want to give PES, uh, good luck to PES, man. I'm, you got your first, you got your first um, O2 fight. I'm proud of you for that. Monday. Yeah, I'm proud of you for that. You've, you've made it. You've not made it, but you've made it to the next level. Um, I want to give Chris Congo a shout out. We've been there from day one at the Lynn Boxing. You've accomplished a lot as well. Um, obviously, my brother Richard Riappo. I want to give Dylan a shout out. Come holler at me, man. Um, Social media so people can follow your journey. Yeah, follow me on uh, Darren.Gibbons on Instagram. I don't really do the rest, really. Just okay, we'll make sure we include that so people yeah. can take your own and stuff. But um, again, thank you very much for giving us some of your time. Obviously, we're going to be here to kind of follow your journey. And, oh, uh, just uh, lastly, um, your fight. You're not fighting on the 6th of April. No. Just um, let us know when you're fighting next. Um, I'm fighting May. I'm not sure the exact date yet, but I will definitely be fighting in May. Not definitely, I'm just seeing how my arm goes. I've got an injured arm, so you see how it goes, really, step by step. And for tickets, people can contact you directly? Yeah, you can contact me on my on my Instagram, Darren.Gibbons. Um, my picture is black and white. You see me kneel, kneeling down with a walkie-talkie building behind me. So, so yeah, just contact me if you did. Cool. Oh, well, thanks again for giving us some of your time, and uh, yeah, we wish you the best of luck, and hopefully, yeah, catch up with you soon. No worries. Thanks. Thanks for your time.